morning, Reverend Kim here from Nine Mile River and Riverview United Churches in East Hans, Nova Scotia, uh, coming to you live from my house in Dartmouth for our morning reflection for this Friday, March 27th, 2020. The very first thing I want to say today is happy birthday to my mother. My mother is uh, always watching these at some point during the day, I hope, uh, and I think, so especially this morning, that she's watching them on her birthday. And I hope that your birthday is filled with laughs and uh, that you treat yourself with some good cake, because we can't treat you at this point. Later, we will later. And um, maybe a few surprises along the way, too. Who knows? Who knows? So happy birthday, Mom. When I opened the Bible this morning, um, I just I just opened her up and I grabbed all my Bibles are at the office so I have my daughter's Bible <laughs> spark Bible which is wonderful um, and I opened it up and it opened right to Psalm 42 which is a beautiful song of lament that re many of you will recognize I thought about singing as the deer pants for the water because of Psalm 42 but I don't have all my licensing stuff in order yet and I don't know if that one is uh, is covered so uh, I decided that I won't do that but taking along the theme of things that bring us comfort in this time so many of you that are watching these reflections in the morning are folks that I know love the old hymns and love scripture and love tradition in the church always always ripe to do and learn something new but definitely feel a sense of comfort for some of the old stuff so this morning's song is going to be like that as well, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the prayer that I've taken, um, I'll tell you who it's by in a minute. Make sure I post that in the section on the comments or in the description section of our video. Uh, is around Psalm 42. So let's begin. Let's start with Psalm 42. I'm going to read it in full. I'm reading from the Spark Bible, which is actually a version of the NRSV, this one. Uh, made for kids. And I'm going to give you a couple things to think about because they're actually in this. One of the great things about this this Spark Bible is that it gives young people and us who read it a, an opportunity to to have a little bit of Bible study, if you will, or some Bible thinking. So it says, Psalm 42, 1, 3, Know it. How did the psalm writer feel in this psalm? I've already given you a hint on this. This is a psalm of lament. It's a, a beautiful psalm, and it actually says under the title in this book, Psalm 42, Longing for God and God's Help in Distress. And then it says, Think about it. When you feel sad or lonely, what kind of prayers do you say? And then it says, Try it. Try writing your own psalm for a bedtime prayer. Use the words of verse 8. The words of verse 8 are, By day the Lord commands God's steadfast love, and at night God's song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. And so there's your homework. You have some homework to do. Writing your own psalm uh, for bedtime tonight. I'd love, to, I'd love to see those in the comment section if you have a chance to write a short psalm for what you might say as a prayer at bedtime. So let's listen to the full psalm now. Psalm 42, longing for God and God's help in distress to the leader, a maskil of the Korites. Verse 1. As a deer longs for flowing streams, O oh my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, with shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? hoping God, for I shall again praise God, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you, from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts, 
all your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands God's steadfast love, and at night God's song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise God, my help and my God. Beautiful. The prayer that I have for you today is based on that psalm. I found this beautiful prayer. It's by Christine Jarrett, and it was posted on Christine Jarrett Reflections on Being the Church in God's New Creation uh, from a blog post from her. I'm going to take some liberty with the words um, around a few parts. This prayer of lament, a prayer of... Um, a prayer of yearning of the heart, a prayer of remembering what was lost or yearning for things that have gone by. Sounds very familiar to those of us in the church. This prayer that Christine Jarrett wrote was originally around the idea of so many folks in church longing for a day when the church was full and thinking about that and my friends church in a new creation is in a new way of being and we are clearly seeing that right now church is becoming something here online we know the church is not the building because we're not in it we are in our homes and we are worshiping together daily right now and especially on Sunday and so church more than ever we're starting to understand that church is the people the church is you and the church is me and the church is those of us that are lifting up God and the Word of God as the reason why we love, the reason why we care, the reason why we keep doing acts of goodness in a world that would want us to do otherwise. And so my friends, let's have a listen to this prayer from Christine Jarrett. Will you pray with me? Close your eyes, take a deep breath. O oh God, we have come into your presence singing your praise, and we are grateful for all your goodness to us. Yet even as we sing, we are conscious that there are so few of us. We remember those times when churches were full, when the halls rang out the praise of hundreds of little feet scurrying off to Sunday school, and there was no room in the parking lot. You know the grief in our hearts that those days are past. You know the questions that haunt us, wondering what we could have done differently. You know the yearnings, the deep yearnings to hear your voice, to perceive your presence, to be led by your spirit into the joy and energy of your new creation. But for now, we hold on to your promises. You have promised that there will be a day when blind eyes will be opened and deaf ears unstopped so that your word will be heard and heeded. You have promised a day when God's people will again rejoice and be glad and laugh at the wonders you have worked in our midst. You have promised that your light will shine in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. So giver of all good things, redeemer of all people, giver of hope and energy and new community. We choose to trust your promise. We choose to live in hope in you alone. We fix our eyes on you and open our hearts and minds and spirits to your spirit's guiding presence. This we ask, that you will give us courage to receive the newness you are even now, creating in our world through the grace of Jesus our word, by which you make all things new. Amen. I love that, to give us the courage to do new things, to think about spreading the word of God in new ways. And so many of us as clergy are finding ways to do that right now that are new and somewhat unfamiliar. 
extremely vulnerable and uh, quite often more authentic than maybe you would like. Coming to you this morning in my favorite home sweatshirt, for example, and my hair a little rustled having not showered yet. These are things that we would normally not see from our clergy and church. But we're just like you. We are living in a time of uncertainty, of concern and crisis. We're holding all of you in our thoughts and in our prayers. We are praying for each and every one of you that you find comfort in these days and that you stay healthy and strong. Our hearts break for our fellow clergy that are not able to be with people who are dying and not able to say prayers over those who have died and with their families. Everything is on hold. So as the deer pants for the water, our souls long for God in this time, and by coming together in this way, we are doing church. I encourage you to forward these Facebook Lives and share them on your feed if you think they might give someone else comfort. This is a way to share the church. This is an opportunity to let people know that not all church is bad. Not all church is exclusive. We long to be inclusive and we need to invite people in to be that way and to be able to go out and be ourselves in the community, letting those people know that God loves them because we love them, or rather, because we love them, that's God loving them through us. So, uh, the song I have for you today is another one in the public domain. It's Take My Life and Let It Be. So many of you, I know, love this one. It's by a writer named uh, Frances Ridley Havergal, 1874. Her dad was a, she's a preacher's kid. Uh, her dad was William H. Havergal, and I sang a version of uh, the Lord, no, nope, the, the Lord is my shepherd that he wrote. I shared that on Sunday's um, worship. So this is a familiar one. Sing along with me if you know it, and then we'll close with goodbye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in endless praise. Take my hands and let them move. At the impulse of thy love, take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose take my will and make it thine it shall be no longer mine take my heart it is thine own it shall be thy royal throne Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. May God take your life this day in such a way that your heart is so filled with God that it becomes a throne where God lives. 
I, that's the line that stood out for me this morning. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. God lives in us. Heaven on earth resides within us, and it's up to each and every one of us to show that to the world. Blessings to you, my friends, this day. Once again, happy birthday to my mom, Maureen Woods. Love to you all. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tonight around 8 o'clock for an evening meditation. Bye.